Hey everybody, uh, Eric here. Just a quick update on my sleep apnea advent patient journey. Going in for my CT scan today uh, at the Wauwatosa Clinic. Pretty excited. Uh, broke my nose when I was in third grade, a, a fracture right down the middle. I'm really curious to see what what the inside of my nose looks like, what my sinuses look like. I've had terrible nasal breathing and problems with headaches for as long as I can remember. Really excited to see what it looks like in there and, and get some insight into what's going on with my airway. So I have that thing pretty much year round where one nostril when I'm trying to go to sleep will just be plugged up 100%. And then I'll lay down on my side and that nostril will open up and the other one will plug. And then I flip over. And then I just repeat that until I finally fall asleep. And it kind of sucks. I'm really curious to see if, you know, there's an enlarged turbinate or maybe even a polyp or just maybe my septum is crazy, deviated. I don't know. CT scans, the, the kind that Advent do, are the stand-up kind, pretty minimal uh, radiation exposure, goes pretty quick. And since they have one in each clinic, you can actually just go to any of the clinics, schedule wherever it's easiest, and the, the doctor will go over with you right there. Uh, my only fear, I think, at this point, would be <laughs> seeing that there's nothing wrong. <laughs> That's my greatest fear. <laughs> I want to see something wrong because that means we can fix it and things will get better. See that Simpsons where they found the crayon in Homer's nose? <laughs> they pulled it out and he got smart. And then nobody liked him, so they put it back in so he was dumb again. The answer is yes, I've probably seen it. I have not. Uh, <laughs> it's been a while since I've Simpsons. <laughs> All right, so that's you. Um, each of these little rectangles is a cut for your face coming straight up and down. And we're just kind of marching our way backwards. So the top of your nose um, is here. Your septum, which divides your nose into two, is this guy here. And then the breathing spaces of the black area is here and then here. So right side, left side. So kind of at the tip of your nose here, it's not bad. Your septum, and we'll see it more as we go further back, it just sort of swings side to side, uh, probably from some of the trauma when you were a kid. Sinuses are these black areas here and here. Black is what we want to see. So those guys looking pretty good. That's good. And so as you go like this, we're going further back into your face. Okay. As we do that, your septum, yep, it definitely kicks over. It's, it's, it, it's really more towards the right-hand side that we see. Next to the septum are the turbinates, which are these gray guys here and here, which are the humidifiers of those. Your turbinates right now, they're bigger than ideal, but they're not as big as they get when you're laying down. So the, 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 the deal that's happening to you when you lay down on you know, right side or left side is whatever side you're laying on, the turbinate on that side is swelling up and then sh taking this, this breathing room away from you. And then you flip over, and then the same thing happens to this friend over here. And so right now you're upright, and so they're sort of they're, they 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 look in real life like they do here, which is they're they're a little bigger than ideal, but you've got some room to breathe in there right now. Um, sinuses still look pretty good, and as we go like this, same thing. We're still going for the back septum, still kicked over. Turbinates still a little bit big. Uh, sinuses still look pretty decent. Now we start seeing the cheek sinuses. And those guys are also looking okay. And then as we go further back in, yet again, now we start, as we get further back in, things kind of start getting a little more problematic. So that septum that was sort of eh, okay um, swings pretty hard side to side at this point. Again, this structure that's sort of, you know, I don't know what you'd describe that, that, uh, that little wiggle side to, high, side to side should be just dead down the middle. Turbinates, big on both sides. And so in your case, the septum being bent doesn't help you. But the other thing that does is it takes away some of the wiggle room that you might have for the turbinates to, like, if the septum was straight, the turbinates might be able to get a little bit big and not bug you. Because the septum is bent, there's just not much wiggle room in there, and so the turbinates getting a little bit big is enough to shut you down. And then the additional things that we start seeing is up in the sinuses, we start seeing a little bit of grayness up in the sinuses between the eyes, which is uh, here and here. And then in the cheek sinuses, we see this gray rim around the sinuses, 
that grayness that we're seeing is swelling in the lining of the sinus is chronic swelling. It's not like an active infection, but that shouldn't be there. So that there's basically inflammation up in the sinuses that's just sort of hanging out and not leaving you, and then tightness in the nose. And then as we go further back in, you know, once again, that septum definitely dances uh, side to side, so it's deviated. Turbinates are big on both sides, bigger on the right-hand side than the left. Same deal, sinuses, inflammation on both sides, and then it's tight on both sides. So this sinus that's here is trying to exit into your nose here, and then things kind of pinch down for you. This guy's trying to come this way, and same story. So tight and tight with inflammation kind of scattered through. Mm -hmm. Same deal back here. Septum just sort of swinging side to side, turbinate's still big, still that inflammation that we're seeing. And then now we're heading more towards the back of your nose. Kind of way back there, we see a couple other things. We see that septum that was swinging more towards the right-hand side, towards the back of your nose, actually swings towards the left. So way in the back of your head, um, there's a pair of sinuses here and here. They're, they're called sphenoid sinuses, there's, it's, it's their name. So on your left-hand side, we got a little bit of gray, but, but mostly black. On your right-hand side, we got a little bit of black, mostly gray. So this guy here isn't draining at all like he's supposed to. So none of that gray should be there. You have that gray kind of scattered throughout, but that's sort of where it's at, at its most prominent. And then that's kind of the end of the, the story. So like the long story short with what we're seeing here is that you do have a deviated septum. It impacts you on both sides. So the septum should be you know straight down the middle. Yours, it's hard to do, but it's... it's kind of going straight front and back. It's kind of doing this to you where oh, okay. it comes to the right and then comes to the left. Um, that's a constant, so he's always doing that. Next to the septum are the turbinates. Your turbinates are big, and then they'll get bigger when you lay down, whether it's one side or the other, or just any position when you're laying down, they're gonna get bigger. There's not enough room in your nose to, to handle both of those realities. So septum's bent, turbinates are big. Um, the, none of that stuff's helping you. And then sinus-wise, the sinus passageways are tight in the upper part of the nose and then there's chronic inflammation sort of stuck behind the scenes there. So kind of recap, deviated septum, big turbinates, sinus is tight with what we call chronic sinus sinusitis, which is chronic inflammation in the sinuses. And then on top of that, based on your history and based on when I'm, when I'm looking at your nose too, the lining on the inside of your nose looks a little bit irritated as well. So that, that it, it, we, we can't say it's allergies without a test, but I'd say certainly sounds consistent with that where change of the seasons is irritating that lining a little bit more and you know causing a little bit more trouble. So you know, we've got anatomy issues in both fronts, both in the, in the nose itself and up in the sinuses, and then you've got a lining issue or inflammation issue on both fronts as well. So inflammation in the nose and then inflammation in the sinuses. So and that's kind of the, you kind of get the full gamut of anatomy issues on all fronts, lining issues on all fronts. None of that stuff is helping you. All of it is not isolated, so it all kind of plays together and puts you where you are. When you try to come after it medication-wise, medications can't do anything to the anatomy, so all that they can do is help the lining, and any medication you can take can really only help the lining on the inside of the nose and only just a, a little bit. The anatomy issues are significant, and the lining issues are significant. Medications can only come after the lining issues, but they can only do so much. And, they, and then on one hand, on the other hand, they can't really get where they need to get to if the anatomy is kind of shut. And I'd say, I, don't, I would say, other than that very, very back sphenoid sinus, there isn't anything that is anywhere near as open as it's supposed to be. But the, the biggest thing that we are talking about right now is really the sleep apnea and, um, and its impact on you. And, and the nose stuff, the nose and the sinus stuff, that is not where your sleep apnea is coming from, but that is a barrier for us to treat that sleep apnea.